All right, so we're going to get going here with uh, some new of the Revit 2010 features. I wanted to start to show these to folks. Um, so some of the cool things you can do um, with the new conceptual mass modeling environment. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go in and say new conceptual mass. Go over to your imperial or metric templates and then your conceptual mass. Uh, go ahead and open up the template that they provide. And you'll immediately notice that it's a little bit different. I'm not going to get into too much of the specifics of the interface or any of those things just yet. But uh, you'll notice that we've got our 3D levels which are in place in these reference planes. Uh, and of course the Revit 2010 interface is a bit different, but uh, I'll cover that stuff in, in later tutorials. Um, what I want to go over is just um, some of the functionality in, in making geometry for building mass. So the first thing I'll do is come in and make a couple more levels um, and I'll just hold control and drag it uh, to make a, another level and I'll make a third level uh, real quick so I've got three levels here if I click it my dimensions are active so this is pretty tall I can uh, if I select this reference plane I can use it as my working plane and I'll hit DI to make a dimension so I'll dimension from that plane to that plane and I'm dimensioning in 3D now which is kind of nice new functionality. I can set that dimension there. So let's make a, make a couple curves and rather than having to set the plane like you used to all the time, you can just select the, the plane. You can, instead of setting the plane in advance, you can just select it and start drawing on it. So I'll go ahead and make a, a spline. So I'm going to make a kind of um, drapey skirt like building face. So I'll just orbit around that. I've got that one. And I can select it, and I'm just going to hit Control-C. Select that level. Actually, I can just um, come under Insert, uh, under Modify, sorry, and say Paste Aligned. Pick Level, and we'll align it to that one. And we'll do that again. Say Modify, Pick Level, and we'll set that one. So I've got all, all of those. And I'm going to select all these and go ahead and make a copy and drag those over to the side because I'd like to show the difference in the two methods of, of making curves and once you start to do some of these things. So we've got these two curves in here. I'll go ahead and delete that dimension because it's a little confusing. Um, now let's modify these a little bit. I'll bring in these points so I get a nicer shape. Now I can select all three of these curves. And I'm going to want to come in here and hit the Create Form button. Um, it's a little spooky at first. It's just kind of all wrapped into this one Create Form button. But um, i got to give the Revit guys credit. They've done a really great job in, in working with the interface and, and making this button pretty smart. So we'll hit the Form button. And now I've got that surface, which Anyone that's been using Revit for a bit already can see that this is a kind of welcomed addition. We can loft to do three curves. And this is a surface, so you can't cut mass areas and things like that out of the surface. But um, you could just as easily make a solid. So now we can select this surface. We can uh, start to do direct manipulation. Some of these things are new. I can you know, push and pull on this one point, which is nice. Uh, if I hit the space bar, it turns it into global coordinates rather than local coordinates, or if I hit the space bar, um, it orients to it. Uh, so that's working quite nicely. Uh, and then if I select this surface, all these menus are contextual. If I hit X-ray, it kind of reveals the, the bones uh, of this curve. So I can come in here and select. I'm going to use my same old tab interface. I can select that kind of base curve, and you can see how it's lofting and how we're building that up. And we can go back down to those base curves and still modify those as well. And, you know, fully associative, so we're getting that history through our model, which is really quite nice. Um, but those original curves were consumed. Uh, so if I turn off X-ray, you see that they're gone. If we select these curves now and um, go into their element properties, or instance properties in this case, we can turn them into reference lines, which is also really nice. That was a little tricky to do before. Now there are reference lines, and you can see they've got the reference planes at the end. If I select these, and 
hit the create form button they're not consumed like they were before I still have access to those original lines um, and I can make operations on those lines uh, where I can't do that with the other one I have to go to x-ray mode on the other one and not kind of pitching for one better than the other just understanding the implications of picking one way of doing it over the other um, with the new workflows um, so these are some of the things you can do with the new conceptual math tool. So that's just general lofting with um, with the new create form button. I'm going to go into how you make sweeps and how you do revolves and some of those other things. And uh, I'll kind of release these video by video. So hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully everyone's excited about it. And um, feel free to post some comments, uh, link to it. Uh, let's get the conversation going.